वेलकम टू एच टू के इन्फोसिस एच टू के इन्फोसिस इज अ ई वेरीफाइड बिजनेस बेस्ड इन अटलांटा जॉर्जिया यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स वी प्रोवाइड हंड्रेड परसेंट जॉब ओरियंटेड इंस्ट्रक्टर लेड फेस टू फेस थ्रू लाइव ऑनलाइन सॉफ्टवेयर ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम्स इट ऑल्सो इंक्लूड्स एक्सेस टू क्लाउड टेस्ट लैब विद सॉफ्टवेयर टूल्स वी प्रोवाइड लाइव प्रोजेक्ट फॉर यू टू वर्क ऑन वी ऑल्सो प्रोवाइड असिस्टेंस विद मॉक इंटरव्यूज रेज्यूमे प्रिपरेशन एंड रिव्यू एंड जॉब प्लेसमेंट असिस्टेंस एच टू के इन्फोसिस इज ट्रस्टेड बाय सो मेनी स्टूडेंट्स अक्रॉस द वर्ल्ड एच टू के इन्फोसिस प्रोवाइड्स वर्ल्ड क्लास सर्विसेस इन आई टी ट्रेनिंग विद रियल टाइम प्रोजेक्ट वर्क फॉर कॉर्पोरेट्स एंड इंडिविजुअल्स स्पेशल आई टी ट्रेनिंग फॉर एम एस स्टूडेंट्स इन द यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स सॉफ्टवेयर डिजाइन डेवलपमेंट QA manual and automation performance testing and maintenance IT staff augmentation job placement assistance and tech support So now I'll create a simply one employee emp dot so i'll call all the setter methods and set the details employee id as 120 employee dot set first name steve employee dot set last name chris employee dot set designation lead employee dot set salary 2000 So finally, I need to set an address. I don't have any address object. So create an address object as well. Address dot set address ID. Set city. set state yeah that's correct vijay set chip code see currently i am setting the static data normally when you are using flight systems all this information will get populated by dynamically populated dynamically and sent it back as an xml representation sorry create will create an xml representation and that xml will be sent back to the client so once after that i need to add the employee back to the list so create call add method and add an employee to that two levels i am not placing any two levels right i have only one level for employee to address relationship so finally i got my employee object employee object i have added one employee and for the employee i have added one address object as well once of that call our marshaller object dot marshall method so our marshall method accepts one jacks the element object so i can pass any kind of object and once after that i am using output stream currently my output stream is console itself i don't want to save to any file so to send it directly to the console you can simply call system dot out because your out also an object of out print stream which is a subclass so finally you are marshaling completed so call this method from your main method
execute this one now. Employees type, we are calling get employee itself. So this is a list object. Some issue. Unable to marshal type com dot employee dot jacksp dot employees type as an element because it is missing XML root element annotation. Did we place that or not? See here you can see that I'm directly placing employees type to the element for our Marshall object. You can see that this is giving some error, which is unable to marshal type com dot employee dot jacksp dot employees type as an element because it is missing XML root element annotation. So if at all XML root element annotation was not available, then your Marshall process won't allow to process the object object to XML conversion. Let me check the object once again. Com employee jobs be employees type. We have added at the rate XML root element at the package level. So those files are imported directly into the project. So they have a local copy during that time. And that's why it wasn't reflected back to our actual files. Let me modify this. at the rate XML root element. Now perform the same process again. Okay. Remove our existing Java file. Sorry, Java file. create java file sorry create jar file so now you got employee jasp dot jar configure build path it was available at this location let me run now one more time so now you can see that you got the generated xml from your object representation create an xml here the reason why I'm creating an XML here is just to, we can easily format the XML within our Eclipse. So 
so right click here and click on source format so it will it will show you in terms of actual element representation so the root element is employees type if you go back and verify your jaxp generated class files so with the root name is employees type which it has used as a employees type element and within your employees type you have employee and employee id value as 120 within your employees type you have list of employees so that means you have again the next element employee type so here employee type is the name of the element it consists of an attribute employee id 120 xml attribute that's the reason it has added as an attribute and once after that all the remaining are normal elements first name last name salary and designation first name last name salary designation and again it consists of one more nested element address which is a reference element open address type address consists of three more elements along with one attribute so our ads id was specified as an attribute and the remaining three city state zip code of this specified as an element so now you got the xml that means you are able to perform the marshalling of an object to xml representation let's perform in the reverse So comment this one, perform, generate, unmarshal object. The unmarshaling it will follow the same steps but you just need to call unmarshaller instead of normal marshaller so that means the first step it won't change and the second step you need to call create unmarshaller which will provide you the unmarshaller object This will also throw Jack's P exception. So wrap it with try catch. So finally, call unmarshal method. Here you can see that unmarshal method is also an overridden method. You have the option of specifying normal file, input stream, reader, or URL any kind of stuff so currently I'm going to create a file object and within the file I'm supposed to pass the name of the file the file name is new file dot XML file the unmarshal method will return an object but you are supposed to downcast to your actual employees type So that means it will just read the content from the XML file and it will use the JAXP framework generated classes and it will create directly the employees object and now you can simply go on get the remaining details by using getters and setters. So I'm calling get employee method which will return a list and once after that I just want only the first element from the employee list. I got the first element. Now I'm calling employee ID. In the same way, we can return all the remaining elements. So here our employee ID is 120. You 
you can see that object has created properly for your employees type from this XML file and you are able to fetch the data properly. One forty. This file can be dynamic at any time, and you can simply read the content from the file and send it back to the front end. So when you are processing with request with respect to the client server communication architecture, so first time you will receive the XML representation from the client and you will process each and everything first you will perform this operation and you will get the each and every element by using unmarshalling object and you will process the request like source destination the startup date and receive date then on the server side you will verify whether the seats are available or not and what kind of affairs and also two way or one way or connection all those information once you have received as an object representation again you will call the generate marshal object and this information will be filled up automatically sorry filled up dynamically and you will directly call the marshaling of an object now and write it to some file and finally send the output back to the client that is how normally everything will be performed when client server architecture is used at this level we have performed both the operations individually you can just combine both the objects and send it back to the client. That's it. Only two operations that will be provided by our JAXP framework, unmarshalling and marshalling, converting from XML object to XML representation and vice versa. So many of our students have given testimonials on how our training programs are. You will find them on kudzu.com and on our website h2kinfosys.com. On our website h2kinfosys.com, you will also find more detailed information on who we are, the courses that we offer, what each course covers. Also, if you are interested in a demo program, please register on our home page on the left hand side. Just give us more information about yourself and we will send you a link for a demo class. The demo class is absolutely free. Experience our commitment by just attending an orientation workshop at no cost. Our team of faculty and advisors are here to guide you with the right information. If you still have more questions, please feel free to call us. Call us at 770-777-1269. This is a United States number. If you're calling from the UK, call us at 020-337-1269. 17615. You can also email us at training at h2kinfosys.com or h2kinfosys at gmail.com. Thank you for watching our videos. We wish you a great career in information technology.